This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Okay guys, well, welcome to a new video. Well, I recently uh, got a copy of Substance Painter and while I was checking out their website, I found a program called a B2M3. And that stands for Bitmap to Material. Now, um, I thought I would check it out and it's pretty amazing, so I'm going to share it with you. It's a, a application that will allow you to take a single um, image, a texture file, like a JPEG, and break it down into uh, AO maps, normal maps, height maps, and all that kind of cool stuff fully automatically. Okay, so let's just uh, walk through that and see how it works. Okay, here we go. Hey guys and welcome back. Well, today we are going to talk about another um, software package uh, by Algorithmic, and I recently acquired this and I'm really, really stoked about it. So that's why I decided to do this short video so I can tell you guys what it's all about, okay? So what is the software that we're talking about? If you go under software, here you have Substance B2M, okay? Now, if we click on that, you will see that it's an application that will allow you to take images and it stands for a bitmap to material but you don't necessarily need bitmaps so you can have jpegs or whatever and you can take that image and what the program will do for you is it will split it up in all sorts of maps okay so you can take a simple single uh, texture file of let's say wood or rock or whatever and once you load that up in the application, it will split that up automatically for you into an ambient occlusion map, a uh, height map, a base color map, and so forth, okay? And that's what I'm gonna show you. But before we jump into that, just to uh, show you the setup here, it's uh, very, very affordable. I think it's only like 100 bucks or so. Actually, let's just uh, quickly see. down here somewhere let's see okay we'll go with an indie license and there you go 99 bucks all right so cool let's jump into the software here we go okay guys so this is our main interface and um, it has I think a, like a zillion options to uh, change your textures we're not going to go through all of them. I just want to um, explain to you guys how the program works so you know what's where and you can go in and play with the sliders and come up with whatever suits uh, your uh, needs. Okay, cool. So this is the main window. Um, here you have your projected cube in 3D. If you hold down the Alt key and left click and drag, you can move that around. If you just want to move your light source, you can hold the shift key and left click and drag, and that will change the direction of your light. Okay, that's pretty standard actually. And then over here you have your main, let's say preview window if you will. And here you have outputs for let's say base color, roughness, metallic if that's available, normal maps, height maps and so forth, ambient occlusion. But we don't have anything on our cube yet. So what I'm going to do, I've got two screens, so I'm going to pull a, a JPEG file from my other screen and I'm going to drop it into the main window. So here we go, here it is. And I'm just going to drop that here. And now I have the uh, choice how I want to put that in. So I'm going to select uh, load in the main input levels. And there you go. Now immediately if we look at our texture here, you can see that it does a great job. Okay, now what do I got going on here? If I look at my outputs, I have a base color that has been created. I got a roughness map. I don't have a metallic map, but that makes sense because it's not metallic. I got a normal map created. I got a height map and I got an ambient occlusion map, right? Now all of these have been extracted from the original image, completely automatic, so no work there whatsoever. Now the cool part is if we go down here, you have all these different options to tweak whatever you are looking at and whatever you want, okay? So I'll just show you a few examples, okay? Let's go to the global. Um, all right, um, here are the method, luminous based uh, compared to slope based. 
if you select that, you see it immediately changes, okay? Now, I'm not gonna get too technical on this, but this is specifically with rough surfaces like rock and so forth. Uh, you would usually have a nice effect if you decide to go with slope based. I'm not too fond with the effect in this situation here, so I'm just gonna leave it at luminous based. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, relief. Okay, so here you can, um, for example, change the normal intensity. So we'll go to our normal map and we'll pull that way, way down. As you can see, it's almost flat right now, or you can bump that way, way up, depending on whatever you need, okay? You got the normal format, uh, depending on what you're gonna use your maps for and what game engine you're gonna load them in. You can choose DirectX or OpenGL, and if you switch, you will see that it updates real time. I'm gonna leave that at DirectX. Uh, let's close that one up uh, and that one too. Let's see what else we got. So glossiness, not applicable here. Metallic, same deal. Uh, ambient occlusion. All right, so let's just pull some slides here and see what we got, okay? You can see that you can easily play with that intensity. Looks cool. You can sharpen that if needed. And you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. <clears throat> So what else, grunge. Now you can decide to just turn it off or turn it on. And if you turn it on, you've got a bunch of levels you can play with. Let's just uh, bring that up. These are a little bit more subtle changes, but they're uh, pretty cool. And uh, let's see, we'll just jump to advanced here, okay? So here you have a, a gamma settings that you can change and so forth. But the cool part here is that uh, we are able to export all these maps, right? Now, if you look at the outputs, based on the original image that has been loaded, these um, ones that are on are the ones that have been generated. Now, if there are any maps here that you don't need, um, for example, let's see, we've got base color, roughness, and metallic. Now, we don't need the metallic, so we're gonna turn that off, okay? We have a normal map and a height map, that's good. We have ambient occlusion. So what we want is all these files to be exported in a way that we can use them in Maya or 3D Max or whatever you're working in, okay? So we simply are going to hit this button, export as bitmap. And once we do that, we get a couple of options. So let's see, we uh, need to select a location where we want to uh, save it. So I'm just gonna go to my desktop and uh, actually, let's just select the texture map here, okay? Uh, I'm gonna need to choose what type of file extension I want. Do I want to save the map as a JPEG or a TGA or whatever? And uh, I'm gonna go with the TGA. Uh, let's see what else. Um, here we have a base name pattern, and we can choose what type of pattern. So uh, based on output name, graph name, and so forth. I'm just gonna leave that at default. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, substance metadata, do we want that embedded? I'm gonna save all that. And here you have the option to choose whether you want all the outputs or just a selection. So I'm gonna use base color roughness. I'm gonna turn off metallic. Uh, I'm gonna keep uh, diffuse, turn off specular. Actually, I'm gonna leave specular on. Turn off glossiness. Normal's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And I'm simply gonna hit export. And there you go. And they are all processed. Now, um, what's happening on my other screen is, and I'll just pull that in. All these have now been created. So how cool is that? Okay, so uh, check these guys out, check the program out and have some fun with this. All right, that's all there's to it. Uh, I know that there's a lot more to say about it, but that's up to you guys. Okay, have fun.